Hello everyone, this is Ross at Teacher Talk, the most influential blog on education in the UK. Today, the third time of asking, I have a, a VIP guest, uh, Stephen Sadler, um, a man of many, many different hats, but he is a guru or, uh, you know, I, I'm going to go worldwide here, Stephen, or maybe you can shoot me down, but um, uh, a worldwide reputation for his uh, passion with technology, robotics, and STEMnet, and particularly lots of the things that he does in his work, uh, which he'll unpick in a moment. And he won the award for Digital Innovator of the Year from the Teaching Awards a couple of years ago, Stephen? Yeah, it's a couple of years ago, yeah. A couple of years ago. So um, I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself to our listeners, tell everyone what you do, and then we're going to unpick STEM and robotics, uh, yeah, a brilliant. topic right up my street. Well, my name's uh, Stephen Sadler, or Steve, as people call me. Um, I've been uh, teaching now for what? 20 years or since I graduated in 96, worked in industry for a number of years and then came back into teaching um, around early 2000, 2002 it was, mid 2002. Um, back to my old secondary school as a uh, technician, um, yeah. I was uh, acting as a technician there and teacher and also helping to develop the school in other areas of virtual learning. I never really intended on sort of uh, beyond to be honest, I never really intended on staying there because I was a uh, in between jobs after I've been made with. That's always the way, isn't it? It's always the way. So, for 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 context, listeners, mm. I uh, in my role as a judge for the teaching awards, I uh, of the many schools I had to visit, stumbled across Stephen at his school. Uh, this was just before the pandemic, wasn't it? About yeah, it was literally just uh, a few months before. Uh, it was literally October to February, yeah. that window just before March 2020, where we were lucky enough to come and see you, and it was phenomenal. C could you kind of give us a visual picture of the kind of things that we saw, if that's possible, and I'll try and add some of my memories, but what, what kind of okay, things um, were you doing on our visit for, for people listening well, here can you get a sense? Uh, so you, would have, you would have seen a lovely, vibrant uh, building as you walked up a long getaway towards the school, and hopefully you've been greeted very well by my SLT. Okay. Yes, we were. I'm, I'm Liam, yeah. coming. Um, <laughs> obviously, uh, the, the students, um, I'd found out it was the students that had actually me and put my name forward. So I do believe yeah. that a lot of the staff didn't even know about it, neither did my head of faculty. So, but I think by that time it'd gotten obviously pretty serious that they had to give up who'd, uh, you know, own up who had actually put their name forward, um, or put my name forward so it's, to, uh, for the award. Um, so, I mean, this is the time of the Silver Award, and I remember actually being at the school and um, my co-head of faculty came to speak to me and said, oh, are you going to be in school on this day? And I said, um, I'm actually not. And I said, oh, well, you need to be. And I, had no <laughs> idea. I had no idea what no it was idea. for, um, but I generally had um, a book to sit my um, uh, uh, an exam because uh, I was in the middle of um, doing my yeah. accreditation. So I arranged to go to the Aut Autodesk University. And this, this event for me is like once a year. Uh, yeah. To be honest, the Queen could turn up, but I'd still wanted to be at Autodesk University to sit and, uh, and, and uh, take this. I was so determined to take this. So there, was a, there was a bit of a secret going on and you yeah, had no so idea. Yeah, so I didn't know. So um, so obviously one thing led to another. It's like, well, no, you really need to be in. I was like, no. So not that it turned into an argument, but it, it got a bit heat. I think, what the hell's going on? Why do I need to yeah. be in school? And, and so eventually, um, uh, my head came to speak to me and said, um, are you going to be in on this day, Steve? And I thought, like, yeah, I can be, yeah. So I think this must be pretty serious. I'm, oh, I'm clearly not in trouble. So you so thought you were up for a disciplinary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something's going on. But I, had no, I generally had no idea what was going on until it was like, right, OK, right. Well, I'm well that's, they've done well to keep that. You must have been panicking, thinking, what have I done? I was, just, I, was just I was confused. I was just confused. I was thinking, well, I've never done work. I don't oh. know what I need to do. There's no, I haven't missed the consultation either. I was thinking, nothing going on. Yeah, but, I've done yeah, my marking. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I turned So up, what we saw was, you know, yeah. uh, uh, in summary, you'll you'll tell me off for not being as technical, but you know, loads of robots, loads of gadgets, loads of kids yeah. playing with all the different projects. A yeah. brilliant DT department, happy staff, and just uh, uh, you know, I'm a DT teacher. It was just a wonderful place to be, and some of the stuff that the kids were producing 
well, you know, it's international. It was international, national, you know, kind of quality material and projects they're yeah. producing, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, definitely. You know, for the technical out there, could you give us a little synopsis of some of the kind of things they're doing, the robots, the programs? Yeah, well, um, they are develop designing and developing um, robots using a platform called Vex Robotics. So Vex Robotics is the educational platform that I chose to use and introduce into the school. It's nearly yeah. well over 10 years ago now. So it's um, really uh, drummed up through from competition. So this competition through learning aspect of getting kids involved in STEM and you know getting other people, or making an industry uh, aware that there's a growing demand, obviously, for all these skilled engineers. And so if we can try and gamify this mm -hmm. learning in, you know, through this competition, and really that's how it stemmed. But from that, um, the kids have obviously, you know, developed a love and a passion for working with this hardware. And mm -hmm. that's led on to a number of students, uh, one student in particular, Daniel Oakley, uh, to design and develop a robot that will float on water. Um, wow. And actually, um, and they've yeah, gone off internationally away. speaking in front of lots yeah. of adults, haven't they? In big, big yeah, kind of we've 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 representations. We've the UK um, a number of occasions, um, up to maybe seven times now, uh, at the World Championships in California. Um, so that in itself has, has been an amazing experience for numerous students um, mm -hmm. that have gone on to set you know, a number of different standards in their field. Uh, and that's also encouraged a lot of other schools in the surrounding area in London and and other feeder primary schools to also yeah now you'll you'll be humble about this but you're a, you're a big cheese in this sector aren't you, <laughs> you <think> so? <laughs> so they say <laughs> I, I, I just, say I just rumor, what I need to do <laughs> rumor has it okay uh, now I'm going to change topic Stephen um, can I bring you back to your 16 year old self you know mm. what was life for you as a young black man you know school education career paths role models all that kind of uh, dialogue. Give, give us a kind of little whistle stop journey. Oh, wow. Um, well, my role, <laughs> I'd say my role model, I have to say, obviously, my parents, my mother in particular, she was a head teacher um, at, at two different schools, actually. She used to be head teacher at Broadwater Farm for about 15 years. Uh, Broadwater Farm? Uh, yeah, it's just after Inter the riots. Fantastic. Wow. She, 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 took, she took ownership of uh, dealing with the community yeah. and the families. I know it very well. Students. Um, so she was there for uh, yeah, a number of years, 16, 16, 17 years before she then was headhunted to turn around another school, failing school. Oh, was this what, 70s, 80s? When was yeah, this? Yeah, this is 80s, yeah, this is the 80s. Okay. Um, and uh, after that, she moved to Ephra Primary School. So I had experience of yeah. doing some work there as well. Um, so you had the teacher they, talk at home all the time growing up. Yeah, so <laughs> I couldn't really Skype off. <laughs> yeah. uh, when you've got a, a, a mother from the Caribbean. Lots of reading, lots of homework. Yeah. Get your homework yeah, done. Yeah, you've, you, you've got to get your stuff done. So uh, so I was always I always had that a, a drive, uh, but I always said I'd never go into teaching because I could see the stresses yeah. and the hassles that my mother had. But at the same time, I could see, you know, I could be shopping with her down in Wood Green one day and then, you know, a group of guys would come up and say, hi, oh, hi, Mr. Sadler, how you doing? I'm like, who the hell are they? Six foot yeah. five tall lads that we always remembered her and respected yeah. uh, Amazing. What, she did, what she did for them. So she was always a drive and, and I say a yeah. role model for me growing up at 16. So that, I suppose, led me to think about yeah. having it as a potential backup plan. So, I mean, I ended up studying at Loughborough University, Industrial yeah. Technology, and decided to do a course of education instead of just uh -huh. a straight product design. What year was um, that? Can I put you on the spot? <laughs> that was, uh, you can guess my age now, that was 92, <laughs> 1992 to 96. God, you know what? It's a funny world. I, I, I'm, I miss Loughborough, that exact same course, I think, by one yeah. A-level grade. So we could have been best mates, we but there you go. We'll, we'll start our best together. mate relationship now. But um, yeah. a great facility. And did you get into sport while you were there? Um, I was into basketball, into football, into tennis. I used to play a lot of tennis um, in North London and basketball for Finchley at the time. But yeah. I, again, I was there really because I knew how great it was as a course for yeah. d &T and industrial design. So that if you're going to go anywhere, it was, if you're going to stay in London, you went to Brunel. If you're going to uh -huh. go to London, you went to Loughborough. So that was and, the place where I attended. Yeah, well, London's a diverse place, but you know, not mm. to say you're not going to struggle with um, you know, mm. the issues that we're still talking about you know, many yeah. years later. What, what, what was it like growing up for you? Was it? Uh, I'm sure it wasn't a smooth it, it, ride, but it was. It was. It was tricky. It was difficult. You had to do a lot to stand out. Um, you know, there was even you know, many things always said to you. Uh, I, I can even remember a time when I was just about to start the course at Buffer, right? Uh, and 
I won't mention the tutor's name, but it's, yeah. it's saying you, you're going to have to work really, really hard to make sure you can stay on this course, Steve. And I didn't really click what you know what you meant by that. Cause I thought, well, yeah, you know, I've made it here. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, and he probably didn't say to anyone I, 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 else, I, was, did he? I, I was the only uh, black guy on my or black person on the course yeah. for a number of years, actually, for about three or four yeah. years. Uh, and it wasn't really that diverse as I suppose many things weren't at that time. Uh -huh. But again, I didn't really look at it, uh, you know, yeah. just, uh, look through that lens because I was really there to just focus on what I need to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I suppose I always had that drive and from my parents. And, so, well. so what happened after after Loughborough? After Loughborough, um, I did some teaching in Leicester. Uh, I, I did my training actually at, um, in Braunston uh, um, yeah. in Leicestershire. Uh, and then I came back and I, I was working in London at uh, my mother's primary school, actually helping her out at Effort Primary School. Right. Uh, to get some primary uh, training and, and really um, try to decide, like you do, what are you, you going to do with your life? Am I going to go straight? Into yeah. <laughs> and, and actually, I, I, you know, I was keen to work for a design consultancy. Um, there's a lovely lady I used to, used to actually one of my, my teachers actually at school, Ross Lucas, she'd actually put me in touch with her son. Uh, at the time, and I was helping yeah. him out at his uh, design consultancy at the time down in Blackfriars, and that was some good training. In yeah. So when did you move out to the suburbs up to Barnet? <laughs> uh, Barnet. Well, um, well, I lived in, lived in Enfield, <laughs> yeah. and so I was ended up working in Barnet just purely by accident. Just uh -huh. it was a visit to pay, you know, the old the old school a visit just to see what was yeah. happening in world design. There you go. Oh, and and I, I guess the key question, history. you know, so obviously that in the uh, I go, go back to Loughborough, there was obviously. Oh. A design, electronics, robotics thing emerging here. Yes. It where was, did it that? Was, I, I was. I suppose we were at the cusp of that era where software was really coming into play. So yeah, CAD CAM I, stuff. I, yeah. I think. I think back now, and it was our year. You know, third and fourth year where we started to be introduced to Autodesk and AutoCAD uh, release. Yes. Release twelve it was, and three yeah. D Studio Max. So the days of mark rendering and doing all your final presentation you remember those days you, you knew yeah 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 um it, it, the, the software came out as like well if you're not using this software and doing your rendering in 3d you know i was lucky it, enough it, to it, meet it, um i met my graphics teacher at my old school i used to be yeah. a student at uh a uh, couple of uh, october ago actually in fleetwood blackpool before i moved to london to train as a teacher and we were reminiscing about uh, orthographic projection by hand, and yeah, now you can just log on to a computer online. All those skills yeah. um, are gone. So I, I, moving forward, um, mm. you know, back to the kind of clubs where you're school and robotics stuff. Um, at yeah. what point did you start to think, right, robotics for kids, STEM club, you know, you, developing you, these that, skills? It, it was around about 2006. 2006. Uh, at that time, I just introduced the school to Virgin virtual learning environment front of. So we were the first secondary school, I think, in the country to adopt a VLE, uh, convinced them. Right, that brilliant. This is the way to go. We we're a split site school as well at that time. I think when you can't remember to... Fronter. Exactly, yeah. So, so does it so, still uh, exist? Uh, it does, but we moved on since then. <laughs> it still yeah. exists. But the technology's moved on, so we moved on away from it. So um but yeah that was great to get involved and also see the pedagogy of how the Scandinavians and Norwegians in particular Difference. Yeah. Um, yes. There wasn't much STEM. It was more focus was on technology. But at the time, we were working very closely with uh, Middlesex University and a chap called Professor John Cave and Dennis Hallam, uh, who was head of faculty at the time and associate head teacher. We used to really help them develop a lot of their project work and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and small scale, you know, uh, STEM kits and things. We tested a lot of them out with our students through systems of control at the time when that course was running and DNT and, and graphics, etc. So. You know, we were very close. We were affiliated with the university, and the campus was basically based in uh, Oakwood. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I could, you know, the, the days when you could lumber students in the back of your car, come on, we're going to go down to Middlesex and go do some work and work with the senior students for a while uh, and see what's going on there and, and, and test mm -hmm. things out. So, we had a lot of hands on experience, um, and then that eventually developed in. to what we then introduced was our enrichment, a triple E enhancement, enrichment, engagement. Yes. Time. Um, and I'm sure yeah, I would have t spoken to you about how that develops over time. And, and that was really where we got to really trial out things. It didn't matter if it didn't work. Um, yeah. it was, we could really experiment and it, it was great um, for the design um, team. It's hard work because we were uh -huh. taking a lot of this triple E course up at the time at, yes. you know, as we were going on for a number of weeks. But 
the kids love them. I mean, we've got kids that visit that are in their 30s now that come back and so. Yeah. yeah. So uh, in terms of what the kids get for Richmond, you know, on, uh, Monday to Friday will know is very busy in a school anyway, but, you know, that after-school enrichment that you offer, you know, outside of the statutory curriculum stuff, you know, what, what yeah, does a regular it's, week... It's, it's, it's on our curriculum. So, I mean, I've got, for example, tomorrow, Wednesday afternoon and Thursday afternoon, I've got my Year 7 enrichment and Year 8 the following day. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's great because I can pretty much teach what I want as long as I, I'm aligning it with the DNC curriculum. Yeah. That allows me, as someone that's into this crazy stuff to really mm -hmm. push the envelope and start and, to you know do some virtual programs. And how do you like, top up your skills? How how do you keep up to date with the latest bits of software and make sure, you know, for in your case, you know, world leading I'm, and keeping up I'm, to what everyone I'm, else is I'm always doing. looking at what universities are still doing. I'm still in touch with people at Loughborough. I'm still in touch with students I know that gone to Bruno. I mean I'm ch chatting yesterday to another student at Wolverhampton on an engineering course. I'm always uh -huh. finding out what they're doing and what they're learning so that I can bring that back. Yeah, they've got the latest the kit, haven't they? The latest bit the of latest. technology. And also it means that when our students are, you know, when the, when students are graduating at year 12, year 13 or leaving at 16, they've got a real idea about what they can do or where they want to go. Um, and they usually have already identified what course they want to do because we've invited some students in to do a talk. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we sort of go from there. Really. But I mean, on, online um, resources, um, looking at what other people do. I mean, I'm just about to finish my, my own in STEM. Um, so that's a mm -hmm. key. So I'm mingling with lots of other teachers and finding out their perspectives of how they deploy it within their classroom. And, and just could you, ideas from different people. Could you just list off, you know, top four or five kind of resources and things you get your kids to do, you know, a, a kind of thing that you do every year or every term that's the... You know, yeah, the, um, well, uh, Vex VR, which is an online program yeah. platform, um, which is great to get the kids into coding as well. Uh -huh. So if you're a computer science teacher, that's definitely one you want to do. The curriculum's all online. Um, you've also got the Vex IQ and the Vex EDR. Again, the curriculum's all online, and that's well supported by the uh -huh. REC Foundation, which is the Robotics Educational C uh, Competition Foundation. They're based in the States. Uh, and they obviously promote the Girls in STEM initiative, and there's a big uh, initiative. Yeah, no, I was just going to ask that there. question, actually. You know, what, what what's your, um, you know, how are you raising that profile and tackling stereotypes? And I know the answers, but just for people yeah. listening, well, can you in the early give me your... days, I, I think for me, trying to encourage or breaking that stigma, especially with, I suppose it even stems down to things like open evenings at school and letting mm -hmm. those parents know that their daughter can actually be involved in yeah. this. And it's, Girls it's, can it's, code and yeah, things like that. Yeah, of course I can. Um, you know, I've got my, you know, you know, my approach is completely different because I've got my own daughter now who's eight. You know, she'd be playing with raspberry pies and building little raspberry pie spider robots. Yeah. And all kinds of things. So really I use, you know, I use, you know show, showcase my own, my own ch children and what they do. Um, been very fortunate that I had a, a Vex Impact a series uh, and a series of other girl teams, um, mm -hmm. Invexables, girl bots. Um, Great. And they were all involved in, you know, these these girls really took it under their wing to try and. Well, I met uh, quite a lot of them when I came to visit, didn't did, I? Yeah. I got so to some see. Of were, some of them were ex students coming back as well. Yeah, I got to see their online IDs and their online projects as yeah, well, which was fascinating. It, exactly. And some of them have gone on to, I mean, Zeta now, and a few others have gone on to look at other areas of biomedical engineering as a result of being part of. Amazing. Robotics. And they would have never done that. Um, some of them have their, their confidence have grown in terms of presenting and, you know, working and talking with, you know, with judges and people like yourself at competitions. And, and uh, <laughs> Hannah, she's just really recently signed off to be a barrister you know I had to right wow before. fantastic so, so the level of um confidence um yeah amongst them has been fantastic so you know the teaching awards was a small part of mm. i guess that you know people uh, it was actually a student you we said offline before that recognized you and wrote the letter and yeah, things Amy, like that yeah. and, and Jane, um yeah. it, it, i suspect you're a busy man before you know getting that recognition and stuff so I guess with a teacher training hat on, what kind of things are you doing to support others? Because I'm sure you're in demand. I'm sure a lot of people email you for advice and things. Yeah, I mean, I always try and we've got a lot of NQTs that, that come through our school. And one of the things I always try to say to them, as well as if they want to stand out, is don't dis... I know you're busy and it's, it is difficult, um, but you, I think as part of the profession, it's really good to give back an mm. evening of your own time or two. I mean, I probably mm. give too much, but... 
but an evening or two of your own time where at least you can, um, you're not just putting something on for the kids, but you're learning with them. something. Yeah, different. sharing is caring, isn't it? Yeah, um, exactly. So you have to, and, and, and with D&T, you know, you know, the design is such an iterative process that you've got to be repeating what you're doing uh, all the time to try yeah, and... Well, I think the nature more. of our subject is, you know, I guess yeah, the physical structure of the department yeah. is you're always sharing resources exactly. and moving between rooms. So it's always that workshop feeling all the time, isn't it? Yeah, um, exactly. So in terms of the people that ask you for advice or the kind of teacher training things that you've led externally outside of your school, give us a picture of the kind of things that you do. Um, I'm also involved with the Create Education Project. So I, that they are an initiative that promotes 3D printing in mm -hmm. from primary schools through to secondary schools. So, you know, working very closely with uh, companies like Ultimaker. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the initiative basically they look to obviously also give a 3D printer out free for the schools to actually test for a number of weeks, six to eight weeks. Um, Michelle, um, one of the ladies there at Create Education was, you know, very kind enough to drop off an Ultimaker printer with us about 10 years ago uh, and it accidentally didn't go to the next school because well, we were doing so much work <laughs> with it. I said, Someone Michelle. forgot to check yeah, the list said, yeah, or the so email. I ended up paying <laughs> Michelle a visit at the Bet Show. I know if she's listening, she'll probably smile, but she did end up letting us keep it because we did a lot of work with it. But that then led us on to you doing training, okay? Yeah, training and also even printing and manufacturing some of the drones you would have seen. Yeah. Well, now, it's other projects like engineers and things like that. Fantastic. Now, kind of switching topics again, you know, the, the umbrella design technology and how the dialogue of, you know, the EBAC and everything else and how DT's evolved as a subject since you and I qualified. I was in a school in North Yorkshire um, before Christmas, about November, and there yeah. was 10 or 12 lathes, beautiful lathes, never used, oh, huge printer in the corner, kids sitting in front of computers, drawing something online that the machine makes it and i know no, there's a space for that but um yeah. th that no, we're, physical we're, labor we're, we're, we're still old school even today we're doing our good old uh, wooden boxes and things like that C could you um give me a, your own perception you know the state of dt across you know, across the country i know you're involved with exam board stuff as well and things like uh, that well but... i think well, it's, it's a shame because i think some uh, when i've been to some data meetings in the past and met other teachers i've found out sadly that Sometimes there's only one or two teachers, or there's one case, one lady I met at the school, and she was the only teacher in her department trying to provide DNT as a subject for, mm. uh, for the entire school. Entire school secondary school. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not good. School. So I'm Can't thinking, survive. I'm thinking, bloody hell, I'm struggling for money and there's so much more I want to do. How are you coping? And mm. I you know, think, you know, I've got a good foundation, good support structure, but I. I <sighs> you and i both know there needs to be more well, subject needs to be put on the spotlight more and this is something I've yeah i mean it's trying to do you, you turn the, the telly on tonight the and you're going to see you're going to see pottery shop you know all these kind of uh competitions so in being all those yeah. all this technology in front yeah. of us and uh the dialogue in schools is uh non-existent i think in it some is. some it, it, respects it is. it is and i think i don't know how you know, as, as um, I'm not that high up, I have to see how they're going to manage it financially. But I, I've, and I've got out of my way, as you know. I mean, as an article I wrote for I, I News, they interviewed me where, you know, I looked at, you know, over the course of the last decade, how much funding I've brought in for the students. And, and, mm -hmm. and it, it, it amasses over 80,000 quid with trips Amazing. and events and, uh, and, you know, help with, you know, from parents as well. Even on our first and second trips to the states we didn't have any money ross to get there yeah, we, yeah we, a, a lot of fundraising and stuff yeah, isn't a it a lot of fundraising uh, a lot of the parents helping out i mean i had one parent so what's your secret formula oh i can't tell you that <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to say one well, parent had, we had one parent doing what <laughs> um, well one, one parent was actually going out to costco buying a load of sweets and we were you know we were selling even penny sweets <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we, we, we tried every every method of um, getting sponsorship, working with industry. I think a lot of departments now need to yeah. get to school and you're not linked with your local industries. It's really important to think, look at your school or your location. Look at the map that surrounds um, your school. Look at all the industrial estates. What do they do? Uh, yeah. Sometimes, crazy as it sounds, 
I've gone for, you know, even where I'm living now, I've gone for a drive just around the industrial estates just to look. To see what's available, yeah. What companies are. Any of them no, that's a tip. Any, any, any scrap metals, any, yeah. any, any, any acrylic that they get well, rid of. An AT <laughs> teacher, there's always a resource outside, exactly. isn't there? There's always um, something you can use. I'll make travels if, to schools. Go on. If, if, yeah, as I say, and also, if you find someone that's interested in what you're doing, put yourself out there and invite them in at what you're doing. If you're confident what you're doing, which I am, and you know what you're doing is good, I've got the great bunch of students that are there to support it as well. And well, absolutely. You make cannot be fair. Introduce yourself, let the kids talk to them, off you go. And, and that's all you need. And uh, we had a laugh offline about my judging process with my colleagues when we came to visit you, but it's a very impressive place to, to go and visit. Um, so, Mr. Sadler, top mark so far, but I wonder if you can pass my kind of uh, end of podcast summary where I'm going to throw loads of quick fire questions at you. And you can't pause or hesitate. So let's see how you get on. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, let's start simple. What project? What projects on your desk tonight? What projects on my desk tonight? Do you really want to see? There's my camera on. here. I'll probably <laughs> shut you got the I've got, on what you're doing. But... I've got the effectiveness of competitive robotics on student learning of computer science. I've got another paper here to read on educational robotics in the stage of secondary education, an empirical study on motivation. Skills. Fantastic. So what's the title of your work at the moment? What's the title of your working paper? My working paper is the effectiveness of competitive robotics and how robotics should be used as a driver for STEM learning in secondary schools. Brilliant. Well, I that's can't wait to read what, that. That's basically what I'm writing on. Yeah. I'm going to record for video and audio purposes. You need to send me that once you've published Thank it, you. please. Um, right, okay, that was a long question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what book are you reading? Apart from your papers, what's your book you're reading for fun? I've, I've, I've just bought Will. The other day. Just with, bought with, Will, with, okay. With Will Smith, and I've got Kimmy Reichenden's book to read as well. Okay. So <laughs> Words of wisdom from your mum head teacher. What was her famous catchphrase? Famous catchphrase. Do as you told, boy. <laughs> no, <I'm joking>. Do <laughs> <as you> told. <laughs> um, for someone who doesn't know Raspberry Pi, what would be your top tip to get? Uh, you know, my ten-year-old son. How could I get him into coding? How to get him into coding? Uh, head to the Raspberry Pi website and um, ask for a lady called Sue. She's one of the senior directors there. I say, Steve sent you. Can you? Steve sent you. Well, there you go, folks. Steve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ask for Sue and then see what happens. Um, what would be your piece of advice? For for a new teacher in a DT department? Wow, that's a good one. Um, make sure you... Collect the know. chisels in. <laughs> yeah, no, get, get to know, as I see it a lot, get to know Autodesk software. Yeah, well, there you go. Get Mine would be count all the scalpels back in. Exactly, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Otherwise, you have the whole kids after school yeah. searching up and down the workshop. Uh, okay, biggest career achievement to date? What are you most proud of? Um, I'm most proud of, to be honest, what my students have achieved and the fact that they all come back with a bottle of rum to say hello. Uh, there you I, go. I, I, yeah. love to hear, I love to hear the stories of how they're they may be, you know, how they're progressing in life. And is there a favourite rum tipple? Um, it's the white rum, the original. Ah. Rum. <laughs> Not Malibu. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, okay. Um, if you weren't doing your dream job now, what would it be? What's that off the wall career? What would it be? Oh, God, it'd probably be a racing driver. I've got to think. Yeah, well, there you go. What, what, what? Bikes or cars or? Uh, cars, cars. Track, I mean, okay. track, track racing, track day racing. Yeah. Track. Now, this is a tough question for you. What is your number one piece of CAD CAM software? Uh, obvious, that one. That's uh, Fusion 360. Fusion 360, Fusion, okay. Autodesk, Autodesk Fusion 360. Have you got a favourite drone or a robot? Uh, my favourite robot is now is the one my daughter's just built. Uh, it's a little a 3D printed handmade. Right, very nice. If we had 24 hours in Finchley, where would we go for dinner? What would we do? What would we see? What What's the local landmarks? The local in Finchley or Barnet? Well, Barnet, Finchley <laughs> or Tottenham even. Where would we go? Uh, um, I'd probably have to take you down to the West End to one of my old clubbing spots. All right, so leave yeah, Lee, Bar Lee, the West Lee, End of Barnet or the West End of London? West End of London. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much to see in Barnet, to be fair, is there? No. Um, okay, position, basketball position? Uh, always, a, always a striker, always the forward. Okay. Um, who would you recommend I interview next and why? 
Who, oh, that's a really good one. I think you should interview Mr. Dennis Hallam. Mr. Dennis Allen, yeah, okay. Yeah, Mr. I'll, Dennis Hallam, I will yeah. look up Dennis and I'll see if yeah, I can find him. him. Um, Stephen, where can people find out more about you? Know links online, you know blogs, yeah. tweets. You can, find, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, my Twitter handle is uh, Steve underscore FC Tuning. So you're welcome to drop me a DM anytime. There you go. And uh, my last question, the big one this time. Um, what would you hope to be your legacy? <laughs> Just, uh, wow. I don't have a bottle of rum to go with this question, sadly, <laughs> but um, in 30 seconds. In 30 seconds. That is a really tricky one. Um, to, be, to be remembered for the, the good I, I've done. Yeah. And there you go. Just simple, just simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Well, that, that was good enough. Well, I, you know, having visited and seen you in action and seen what the kids say, um, I think that is evidence from all the kids Thank that you. visit you and all the things you do around the world. Um, and although you know the pandemic's got in the way and I wasn't physically yeah. able to be with you for the teaching awards, it was great to see all the photographs and the videos Thank emerge you. and your Thank big you. cheesy smile uh, <laughs> out there as you lifted up your award and stuff. And uh, how cruel all your school to play all that on, you're thinking oh, you no, might no, have been no. facing a disciplinary rather than a teaching <laughs> award. Uh, but can you pass on my best wishes to Leanne and everyone else at your school do. and uh, everyone for listening, Stephen Sadler, do check him out. If you need help with DT or or some robots or stem or whatever it is this is the man he is the big cheese um so Stephen, thank you for your time i hope to see you thank physically you, Cheers, in the future soon i'm back on the road so hopefully i'll come and pop in soon and say hello brilliant all right all the best all the best